Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. Glad to be with us. Today, we're going to be talking about stress. How many people have stress? Raise your hands. Of course you have stress. Everybody's stressed out. And you have stress from uh, physical problems. Uh, pain can cause stress. Chemical problems, eating a bad diet, holidays, family, COVID. There's a lot of things that are causing stress right now. And I want to talk about what stress is, what the physiological effects, that means how your body works, how stress affects your body. And then we're going to talk about some things that you're doing very innocently that are causing stress that you could easily fix. So it's a lot of good information. And of course, if you're just joining us, uh, we've been doing this show now for, gosh, well over a decade. And so we got a big following. And our website, drjoe.com, has over 1,500 hours of podcasts. And any podcast service we have, you can look me up, Dr. Joe Esposito. The name of our podcast is For the Health of It. So if you like this, you can tune in and get our podcast. So I want to talk about what stress is. Stress is your body's reaction to harmful situation. Now, it could be real, could be perceived. Many of us have had this thought in our head, oh my gosh, something's bad going to happen, and you stress over things that never really happen. So even perceived stress is going to have the same physiological reaction as actual stress. So you might feel threatened, and when you are, a chemical reaction allows your body to react so you can prevent injuries. The reaction is known as what's called fight or flight. So fight means I'm going to stand up to the stress, I'm going to fight it, or flight, I'm going to run away. Uh, either way, the body responds the same way. So during, during a stress response, your heart rate increases, your breath quickens, your muscles tighten, your blood pressure rises. You're getting ready to act, and you're ready to protect yourself. So even a perceived stress, I'm so worried about what's going to happen, that perceived stress is going to create this fight-or-flight reaction. So stress means different things to different people. Some people... Uh, uh, may respond to something where other people, it's no big deal. You meet people like that. They're like, how are you so relaxed all the time? It's just their innate way of dealing with stress. And so, so everyone will have a different reaction to it. And some people are so stressed out, they're like little chihuahuas. They're nervous all the time. They're jumpy all the time. That's not a good thing because short-term stress is actually good. But if you have long-term stress and it doesn't go away, that's when it becomes a problem. So symptoms. Because people say, well, Dr. Joe, I don't think I'm stressed. And then we do an evaluation on them. And sure enough, they're like stressed out the wazoo. So emotional stress, you may become easily agitated, frustrated, moody. How many people are like that? We all know someone like that. You feel overwhelmed. You're losing control. You're not able to take control of a situation. Having difficulty to quiet your mind and relax. You lay in bed. Your mind is racing. Uh, you feel bad about yourself. You have low self-esteem, loneliness. You're depressed. And you start to avoid others or social situations. That can be emotional stress. And if you have those things, you're suffering from stress. Physical symptoms, how about this? Anybody have these? Uh, low energy, headaches, upset stomach, diarrhea, constipation, nausea, uh, pains, uh, uh, muscle tension, uh, chest pain, rapid heart rate, insomnia, frequent colds and flu. If you're under stress, you're weakening your immune system. And we've done a lot of shows on the website about the immune system. Uh, loss of sexual desire or even ability uh, nervousness, shakiness, ringing in the ears, dry mouth, clenching your jaws, grinding your teeth. These are all signs of the symptoms of stress. Again, could be physical stress, could be chemical stress, could be emotional stress. This is how you're displaying that stress. Cognitive function. Cognitive means what? How your brain works, how you think. So you're constantly worrying, racing thoughts, inability to focus, poor judgment, uh, being pessimistic, only seeing the negative side of things. And then behavioral. Maybe that's a change in appetite. You procrastinate a lot. You increase your alcohol, drugs, or cigarette intake. You exhibit more nervous habits, such as nail biting, fidgeting, pacing. So you could look at your symptoms and say, yes, I'm experiencing a lot of stress. In our office, we can also measure something called cortisol. Cortisol is a hormone it's released by your adrenal glands. And cortisol is supposed to rise in the morning, and it wakes you up. And then as the day goes on, in a perfect world, your cortisol levels start to plummet. Then you get tired, then melatonin kicks in, and then you go to sleep. That's a perfect world. However, when we measure your cortisol levels, if the cortisol level is constantly high throughout the day, you've got a problem. Is it chemical, a physical, or emotional stress? That's what we're talking about. What's causing the stress? With every patient I've ever seen in the past 37 years of my career, every patient, we want to get to the cause of their healthcare problems, not just treat the symptoms. Now, you can have physical stress and we can get you some medication. And a medication will you know, knock you out. Well, that's great. That'll relieve the symptom, but it's not treating the cause. So whenever we have a health issue, including stress, what's the cause? And that's what we're going to talk about today.
So long-term effects of stress can be pretty dangerous. Now, again, you're sitting at a red light, you're late for an appointment, you start getting stressed out, a part of your brain called the hypothalamus kicks in, and hypothalamus sends a message to your, to your body and says, something's wrong. I've got to release these stress hormones and get the body working again. So the hypothalamus sends these stress hormones into the body, the breath quickens, your muscles tighten, uh, your hair stands on end, and you're getting ready for an attack. Now, if you're sitting in traffic, chances are you're not going to get attacked, but you're stressed out. And once again, we can measure this for, through blood work or through even a, a saliva sample, we can measure the cortisol. So stress is natural. It's supposed to happen. Everybody has it from time to time. Some of us more than others. Some of you less than others, of course. Uh, the number one stress that we experience as humans is death of a loved one. There was a, Han, a researcher, I don't know if he's still alive or not, Hans Selye out of Canada. And Hans Selye measured stress levels in people. And he said the number one thing that causes stress to humans is death of a loved one. And I think if you've had someone die in your life, and I come from a big Italian family, I've been to a lot of funerals, you know that that's true. The number two stress, what do you think the number two stress is? The number two stress is moving. Now, with situations where you may have to move from a new job uh, to a new relationship, to a new house, to a new town, when you move, that's the number two stress that we have. And so many times when situations occur, like, I don't know, global pandemics, for example, many things can happen. It could ruin a relationship. It could, you not be able to see your family. Uh, you may lose your job. You may lose your house. And so there's, there's stresses that kick in, and the body responds by firing off these like things like uh, cortisol. So you might have irritability, anxiety, depression, headaches, insomnia. So I want to talk about how it affects your body and the different things that occur uh, in your body so you understand what's going on. You may not realize that you're in a stressful situation because a lot of people are stuck. Remember the old Elvis Presley song, I'm caught in a trap? You're stuck there. And you think, well, this isn't stressful. I've been in the same marriage, relationship, whatever, for years. Well, it could be long-term stress going on. You don't even realize it anymore. So your central nervous system, that's the, the brain and the spinal cord. Central nervous system is the brain sending messages down your spine. The peripheral nervous system are the nerves that go from your spine out to your body. So there's the central and the peripheral. So the central nervous system takes charge of the fight or flight syndrome. The hypothalamus gets the ball rolling. It tells your adrenal glands to release, release stress hormones like cortisol or adrenaline. These hormones rev, rev up your heartbeat. They send blood rushing to your arms and your legs, takes it away from your digestive system. And now we're into that fight or flight mode. When the perceived fear is gone, the hypothalamus should tell the systems to go back to normal. If the central nervous systems fail to return to normal, or if the stress doesn't go away, for example, you're in a bad job or a bad relationship, the response continues. So chronic stress is also a factor of uh, how, you, how you respond to it. And your behaviors may, behaviors may change. You may eat too much, not enough. You may have alcohol or drug abuse, social withdrawal. So when you start to see these things, you may be blowing it off as, well, I'm not socializing now anyway, or I'm in a situation where I'd rather uh, just stay home and eat and watch TV. These can all be indicators. And that's why you may not realize you're having these stressful reactions. We can do a cortisol test and see where you are. And when we find that, then we can say, yeah, it's pretty bad. Uh, respiratory and cardiovascular systems are affected. Uh, during stress response, you breathe faster in an effort to distribute oxygen quicker to your body. If you already have breathing problems like asthma or emphysema, the stress can make it very hard to breathe, could even be deadly. And so under stress, your heart pumps faster. Stress hormones cause your blood vessels to constrict and divert blood into your muscles and away from your digestive system. So herein lies the rub. You're under stress, chemical, emotional, physical stress. Your body is taking blood away from your digestive system to send it to the muscles. Your digestive system isn't able to break down foods and absorb nutrients properly. Your muscles are working overtime, because you're under stress, and they need more nutrients. Your digestive system can't give them the nutrients because it's not able to break the food down. You're not able to absorb the nutrients. And so now you're more stressed. And so now you're caught in this cycle. The stress takes nutrition away, the blood away from the digestive system. Digestive system can't absorb nutrients to supply the muscles when they're under stress, and so you get more stressed out. And so that's why it's really important that we come to the realization that, yes, I'm in a stressful situation. What steps can I take? Again, we're going to talk about that. i got to kind of lay the groundwork here. So your digestive system, of course, is going to be effective, uh, affected. If you're under chronic stress, your body may not be able to keep up 
with the surge of glucose that it needs. Glucose is the type of sugar your muscles and your brain and your nervous system use as fuel. So glucose is released from your body, even if you're not eating sugar uh, and you're under stress, like long-term stress, your liver starts to produce glucose. It's through a process called gluconeogenesis, where the liver breaks down proteins into sugar. And so if you're in this ketogenic diet, which I'm not a big fan of, by the way, um, and you're, you're not giving your body glucose, the body's going to say, dude, I need some glucose. And then the liver is going to take protein and convert it into glucose anyway. So if you're under chronic stress, the body can't produce enough glucose. That's why many times you overeat. You're trying to get those glucose levels up. Stress can increase your risk of developing something called type 2 diabetes. Now, diabetes is what we call a comorbidity to a lot of other diseases. Sometimes it's primary. But things like COVID, most people, if they get COVID, recover unless they have a comorbidity. That's when you see the death rate skyrocket. But the same thing with colds and flu. Same thing with any other disease. If you have one disease, the body in most cases is able to deal with it. When you have diabetes, heart disease, obesity, cancer, uh, you eat bad, you're under stress, these comorbidities allow these other conditions to kind of set up shop and really cause a lot of damage. So when it comes to stress, I want you to consider what are your comorbidities? Do you have high blood pressure? Go to our website, drjoe.com, type in blood pressure. We have a whole two-hour lecture we did on blood pressure. Maybe it's diabetes. Maybe it's uh, obesity. Type in weight loss. Type in uh, whatever it is, cholesterol. And listen to the shows we've done on the comorbidities. And when you're able to address the cause, that's when you start to get healthy. You can't get healthy unless you get to the cause of, this, of the problems, no matter what it is. So if you have stress, let's assume I'm, uh, I'm stressed at work, okay? And then I have high blood pressure. Then I'm obese. Then I'm on all these medications that are affecting my liver. Now the body can only send out so many warriors to fight the battles. So we say, okay, what can we do about blood pressure? Listen to the show we did on blood pressure. Maybe you need medication. Maybe not. And that's the nice part is we give you options. And again, some people need medication. I'm not against medication. I'm against unnecessary use of medication. Maybe you have pain. If I have a blazing headache, I want to take some acetaminophen to get rid of my headache. But then I want to go see one of my doctors and say, hey, find out why I have this headache. Is a bone out of place in my neck pinching a nerve? The number one cause of back pain is pinched nerves. Chiropractic care is the most effective, least expensive treatment for back pain. So when it comes to back pain, you should consider chiropractic first, always. Now, we can't fix everything, but in many cases, that's the solution. Most effective, least expensive, and the fastest with the least side effects. Why wouldn't you do that first? That makes no sense to me why anyone would go anywhere else when it comes to back pain as your primary portal of entry. Now, if I'm screaming in pain, I've lost bowel and bladder control, yeah, maybe we need to get you to the emergency room right away. But if you're able to function, you need to come go to a chiropractor, I feel, first, if it's something we can't treat, we then send you, we have a medical doctor as well, we send you to a medical doctor. And if that's not something we need, we can send you to one of our surgeons. And if it's not a surgical case, maybe we send you to a physical therapist. So we have a team of experts that we work with that can, that can work with you. But I like to think of uh, our team, our offices as being the captain of the ship. We're going to drive the ship and say, okay, go this way, go that way. And so if you have issues, you might want to start with us. And we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. We'd love to be your doctors. Um, then we can say, okay, what else is going on? Do we have comorbidities? Well, the stress is causing a glucose issue, which is causing an insulin resistance reaction, which is causing type 2 diabetes. Let's address the type 2 diabetes then. I had a patient come in the other day, a very rare autoimmune disease for his liver. No treatment whatsoever is available. And unfortunately, they wait till it gets bad enough in most cases, and then they put him up for a liver transplant. Only option. Young kid, 20-some-odd years old, very stressed out. His father listens to my show all the time. And he came in, and I said, okay, everyone's talking about your liver. Let's talk about the fact that you have an autoimmune disease. And his eyes lit up. And he said, well, no one's ever talked about that before. They keep talking about the auto autoimmune disease causing the liver issue. But what's causing the liver issue is the autoimmune disease. So now we look at that. We say, okay, let's get you off the things that irritate the immune system. Wheat, dairy products, got to cut those out. Build up your immune system. Take vitamin D2, uh, D3, I'm sorry. Um, vitamin D3. Take glutathione, which is a supplement that helps the liver heal. Uh, super greens, an essential source. Don't stop your medication. Let's add this to it. And then let's fix his stomach. He had a lot of acid reflux. So the stomach can push up against the diaphragm. And when I'm stressed out, that's what happens to me. 
And so I got to go in there and have one of my doctors adjust or pull my stomach down away from the diaphragm physically, relaxing my stomach. And then my acid reflux goes away. Then I'm able to digest my food again. So if you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, many cases, it's a physical problem, not a chemical problem. And what do we try to do? We try to treat it chemically. Once again, I'm not against the chemical treatment, but let's address the physical uh, components. Many times that solves the problem. So if you're having digestive issues, heartburn, acid reflux, that becomes an issue. Now, your body will increase stomach acid if it's under stress. Eventually, you can burn out, so to speak, and then have too little stomach acid and with similar symptoms. And so now we have to go in there and find out why. Maybe we've got to get you on some digestive enzymes. Maybe we've got to pull the stomach away from the diaphragm. Maybe we've got to get you eating something raw at every meal because raw food has enzymes in it. If you're eating nothing but cooked food, how many people eat nothing but cooked food? Most of you. Eat something raw at every meal. Broccoli, cucumbers, avocado, salad. Raw food is going to give you the enzymes that your body needs to break down your food. And as we get older, our enzymes drop. It's part of the aging process. And I say if you want to do anti-aging work, and of course I think all of us want to do anti-aging work, we have to get our enzyme levels up and we have to get something called nitric oxide levels up. Nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels and allows to increase circulation and can help lower blood pressure. So if we can get nitric oxide levels up and enzyme levels up, along with a good diet, along with getting the physical issues addressed, now we have a health care plan. Most people have health insurance, but they don't have a health plan. And the health insurance is supposed to pay for the health plan, but many p- times people don't know what a health plan is. Treating symptoms, I don't consider a health care plan. It's necessary. It's part of it, not the whole thing. We want to get the nervous system working, the digestive system working, and your diet fixed. Those three things are the core to having a health care plan. And in our offices, my doctors are all trained by me, um, and they have their own training as well, and they're my personal doctors. So if I don't trust them taking care of me, I don't trust them taking care of you. And so my doctors, I believe, are some of the best in the world, and that's my opinion. And you can argue with me if you'd like, but no one's ever been proven me wrong yet. So when you're under stress, we're talking about other things that happen. I got off on a tangent there, didn't I? Uh, The muscle system, muscles tense up. When muscles tense up, they attach to bones. Bones can be pulled out of place, pinching nerves. Nerves control organs. Nerves control muscles. So if you have pinched nerves, you might have pain, but here's the hook. 90% of your nerves don't feel pain. You can have a pinched nerve and not know it. And those nerves control the organs. So I don't feel my blood pressure. It's controlled by nerves. I don't feel my spleen. I don't feel my prostate. I don't feel my toenails grow. All controlled by nerves. So in our offices, we check the nerves that feel pain and we check the nerves that don't feel pain. So we're just treating pain, we're ignoring 90% of the body. And much of that is attached to, well, much of that is related to the muscle system because the muscles can spasm when you're under stress. Another symptom of stress could be loss of sex drive. Stress is exhausting to both the body and the mind, and it's not unusual to lose your desire when you're under constant stress. Short-term stress may cause men to produce more male hormones. Testosterone is the male hormone, and women too. Testosterone's in, in both. But this effect doesn't last. Eventually, if you produce too much, you burn out, and then you produce less. So if stress continues for a long time, testosterone levels can drop. This can interfere with sperm production and ability to function for men and women when it comes to romance. And chronic stress can also increase infection in prostate. And so many times men have prostate issues. And one of the first signs is you got to wake up and pee a lot. And when you pee, it's not coming out as smooth as it used to. Now, yeah, we're going to get older. Things are going to get weaker. I get that. But if there's a, uh, an infection in the prostate, that's weakening the immune system. So what do we do? Instead of treating the prostate, which we probably should, I should say, in addition to treating the prostate, we want to treat the immune system. Make sure you're getting away from sugar, which blows out the immune system. Getting away from stress if we can Again, my, my, uh, my, my personal immune protocol is Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, Dr. Joe's Glutathione, and Dr. Joe's Vitamin D. I can't imagine not taking that every single day. And all the supplements, by the way, we talk about are on my website, drjoe.com. You can pick them up in our offices or you can order them online. We're more than happy to ship them to you. And the kicker then, of course, with the immune system, with stress is the immune system. So the immune system uh, can do a lot to keep us alive, of course, but when it's long-term stress, it can increase your risk of risk, risk increase your risk of infection, uh, not healing, wounds not healing. And over time, stress hormones weaken the immune system and your body's ability to fight off foreign invaders. 
And now suddenly, you may be used to some things. And again, I'm not going to give you a lecture on immunity. That's on the website, drjoe.com. But when you're exposed to something, let's assume a virus, your body learns what it looks like, how to respond to it. And then when you're exposed again, your body says, oh, I know how to do this. Wait a minute. Let me get these specific white blood cells and go send it out and fight the, the battle. That's the principle behind the vaccine. I give you a vaccine. Your body learns this is how what we fight. The problem is when a virus mutates and viruses always mutate. That's how they stay alive. Their job is stay alive. So if they realize that somewhere out there, virus is getting killed off somehow innately, and we don't know how this all works, that virus will say, I got to change so that that, that that antibiotic doesn't work. Well, antibiotics don't work on viruses anyway. That immune system uh, attack that we've been exposed to, we as viruses, uh, no longer works because we've mutated. And so that's why I feel even if we have vaccines, things are going to keep mutating. And so my goal, and again, what you do with vaccines is up to you. That's a personal choice. You've got to build up the immune system. And we know, I mean, we, I did, I've done a show not long ago on vitamin D. And people that had normal to higher level, higher normal levels of vitamin D reduced their risk of infection dramatically. And in fact, one study was out that people with normal vitamin D levels had a 50% lower risk of getting COVID. That's huge. 50% reduction? That's crazy. And so even vaccines sometimes don't have that kind of response. And so <clears throat> it's really important that you keep that vitamin D level where it needs to be. And in our office, we can check your vitamin D levels. We can also check, by the way, your testosterone levels and your estrogen levels. And we can see where is it. And sometimes with testosterone, kind of go off on a tangent here, because when I said sexual you know, uh, function, everybody's ears perk up. We can test the testosterone, but your testosterone may be normal, but there's something called free testosterone. Free testosterone is the testosterone form that makes everything work in the body, men and women. So if you have normal testosterone, but low free testosterone, we got to boost that up. Now we can do things like we can even go as far as uh, bioidentical hormones, but many times it's something as simple as giving you boron. Boron frees up the testosterone from the bound testosterone to make it bioavailable, usable. There's also a supplement, we don't have it on the website. I'm working on a formulation for this, by the way, called fenugreek. Fenugreek can help raise your testosterone levels. Then the boron can help free up the testosterone. So if our fenugreek is, is put into the diet and then we have enough boron in our diet, many times the testosterone levels are normal. Now, if you got confused on that, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll move on. But hey, just so you know that there are ways to boost testosterone aside from just uh, drugs and hormones. Um, and by the way, this show and over 1,500 hours of other shows are going to be on the website, drjoe.com. And you could just search, put in a search bar what you're looking for and it'll come up uh, and you'll find it. So we got to deal with the mental, chemical, and physical stresses uh, if the body is ever going to get well. And again, the second part of the show, I'm going to talk about some things that you're doing that might be making a mistake. Folks, got to go to a break. If you have any questions, send them to me through the website, drjoe.com. If you want to make an appointment to come see us, if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, go to our website, make an appointment. My team of doctors is really good at dealing with pain. The initial visit was 375. That's an exam, x-rays, consultation, first adjustment, and then the second visit going over your x-rays and doing a, a nutritional evaluation. That was 375. We've reduced it to 199 through COVID. We're trying to make it easier on folks. Again, all the supplements are on the website, drjoe.com. But if you have a health issue, stop suffering needlessly. So many people come to us every single day. Again, we have four offices. We're very busy. Patients come to us and say, Dr. Joe, why didn't I do this sooner? Why didn't somebody tell me about this? Get the nervous system working, the digestive system working, and your diet. And in most cases, you'll see a dramatic improvement in your health. Again, the website, drjoe.com. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. We'll be right back. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. I am so glad you're with us today. If you're just joining us, welcome. If you've been with us all along, thank you for staying with us. So the first part of the show, we talked about stress and how stress affects your body. And we listed a bunch of symptoms that you may have that you never realized were even important. Well, it's no big deal. I remember I, I, when I teach, I teach a lot of postgraduate for doctors. And I say, don't ever become a taint nothing doctor. And they say, what's a taint nothing doctor? Well, taint nothing. Don't worry about it. No, it is something. If you grind your teeth, if you can't sleep, if you've lost uh, your, your uh, physical desire for your partner, uh, if you uh, have muscle tightness, you have headaches all the time, if you have uh, digestive issues, these are all symptoms telling you that there's something wrong. It's like a fire alarm going off, and you just ignore the fire alarm. 
Or worse yet, you shut off the fire alarm and don't leave. And many times that's what we can do. We can cover up the warning signs and then the fire sets up. And that's the same thing with, uh, with health care. Many times we want to cover up the symptoms, which I'm all okay with, man. I'm perfectly fine with covering up symptoms. But you also want to get to the cause of the problem. So uh, that's the first half of the show. If you missed it, it's on the website, drjoe.com, drjoe.com. We also do a podcast, and the podcast, uh, all the major podcast services carry it. It's called For the Health of It. Kind of cute, right? That's the name of my first book, by the way, Eating Right for the Health of It. Or Dr. Joe Esposito. You can find us there if you like listening to podcasts. But on our website, we have over 1,500 hours of podcasts, and you can pick and choose right from the website if you'd like to. We get you the information however you like it. If you like audio, if you like video, uh, if you like podcasts, if you like live streams, whatever you want, we're doing for you so we can get you well and keep you well. We're just sick and tired of people being sick and tired. And it scares me, we talked earlier in the show about comorbidities, that everybody's worried about COVID and they're worried about cold and they're worried about flu. And Nobody's talking about getting your body healthy. Now, I'm not saying if you're totally healthy, you're not going to get sick, but chances are, you're not gonna, you, chances are much less you're going to get sick. And if you do get sick, chances are you're going to recover a lot faster. And so deal with those comorbidities. And we've covered most comorbidities on our website, drjoe.com. So what I want to talk about now are junk foods in disguise. Health foods that you think are healthy that aren't. We're going to cover that because a lot of people come to me every single day, seven days a week. I get questions and answers, questions every single day through our website, drjoe.com. And they say, Dr. Joe, I eat a good diet. Okay, tell me about your diet. And then they list what they're having. And the one thing that always makes me laugh, Dr. Joe, I have a smoothie every morning. My smoothie's great. What's in your smoothie? Well, I put fruit juice in it and I put agave nectar in it and I put some fruit in it. And then I add milk to it, and I'm like, oh, gosh, you're killing yourself. Oh, my God. There was nothing in there. Maybe the fruit was the only thing that's actually good. But if you're drinking fruits that's blended into a liquefied concoction, you might think that's really great, but it's not. The reason most fruits, fruit smoothies taste so delicious is because they're added fruit. Uh, they add fruit. They add juice. They add frozen yogurt. They add agave. They add honey. They add dates. Again, a little bit of date might be okay, Right. Somebody said the other day, I had a date last night. It was fun. This week, I'm going to try figs, you know. Anyway, fruit joke. Um, I don't get a lot of them. I've got to sneak them in when I can. So you start adding nut butters and coconut oils. And now what we're creating is this, this super high concentration of sugars and fats that really isn't good for you, especially fruit juice. People ask me all the time, well, Dr. Joe, what about juicing? I am not a fan of juicing fruit. I have a juicer. I'll juice vegetables. I juice celery love juicing celery, and then I take the pulp and I'll put a little lemon juice on it, maybe some uh, uh, onion in there, and I kind of make it look like tuna fish. And I'll eat the pulp and then drink the juice. That's okay. But when you start juicing fruit, you're getting way too high concentration of something called fructose. And fructose is a sugar that in your body cannot be utilized. So the sugar, uh, the fructose has to be converted into something called glucose. Glucose is the type of sugar that your body needs for fuel. So when you're eating fructose, it has to be converted into glucose. In the process of converting fructose into glucose, you create something called uric acid. Uric acid gets in your joints and it hurts. What's the disease everybody knows about uric acid with? Gout. I have patients come in with gout probably three, four times a week in our offices. And they say, well, Dr. Joe, I was told to cut out meat. Nobody ever, in all the years I've been in practice, ever said cut out the fructose. Because fructose converts into uric acid. Uric acid prevents your body from producing something called nitric oxide, properly preventing it, properly producing. Nitric oxide, we talked about earlier, opens up your blood vessels. It increases circulation. So if you have high fructose diet, and that's high fructose corn syrup, which is where? Everywhere. Everything has high fructose corn syrup in it. It's cheap and it's sweeter than regular sugar. It's pretty great. So you're drinking high fructose corn syrup, agave nectar. Agave nectar has more fructose than high fructose corn syrup, not a health food. You're drinking fruit juices loaded with fructose. White table sugar is 50% fructose, 50% glucose. The glucose, okay, your body utilizes it. The fructose has to be converted into glucose and in the process creates uric acid. Uric acid prevents nitric oxide production and now you have circulatory issues. So we listen to TV or we listen to radio, watch TV. We see commercial after commercial for male enhancement pills. And you can take these pills and it's going to, wow, you're going to be like a 16-year-old again. A, they're dangerous. <clears throat> Excuse me. The reason they're dangerous is they can be too much of a vasodilation. Nitric oxide is the natural way to increase circulation. 
So you're taking fructose, you may be having circulatory issues, memory issues, uh, cold hands, cold feet, wounds not healing properly, romantic issues, and that could be because the fructose is not allowing the body to produce nitric oxide. So suddenly those sodas that you're drinking every day aren't just sweet and fattening, they're also dangerous with the high fructose corn syrup. And the high fructose corn syrup is usually made from genetically modified corn, and that is another lecture I'm not going to do today, but I've done it before. It's on the website, drjoe.com under GMOs. So I digress. So you're going to have a smoothie. Maybe you add some yogurt to it, maybe some ice cream to it. Not a health food. So when I, when I created my, my original supplement, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, we take fruits and vegetables, juice them, and take the water out at a very low temperature so that the enzymes are still active, and we take the sugar out. So now you have powdered fruit and vegetables without sugar in it. Then we add prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, a complete multivitamin to it. And that is what I consider the flagship supplement, Dr. Joe's essential source. And it's loaded with enzymes and you get the benefits of fruits and vegetables. It's not as good as eating whole fruits and vegetables. Why? Because you take out the fiber and you need fiber. So fiber is a key that you're not going to get from juicing, but with the essential source, a lot of times people have digestive issues. So I'll ask you a rhetorical question. I know you can't answer it. How many people have digestive issues? A lot of you do. And it might be irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's, colitis. Um, so many people are diagnosed with this, and what the doctors tell them is cut out your fiber. Fiber irritates your colon. Well, the reason you probably got these diseases is because you didn't have enough fiber. So with essential source and super greens, uh, we are able to absorb the nutrients very quickly, and the body is able to heal in most cases. So that's why the minimum supplements I recommend everybody take every single day is super greens and essential source. Now, you can do that and make that as your smoothie. And you could add coconut milk or almond milk to it, unsweetened. And then if you want to add some fruit to it, you can do that as well because it has fiber. And now you've got an amazing smoothie, way better than anything else you could ever make or buy, and it gives you so many more nutrients, and it's not dangerous. And that brings me to, uh, there's a quote in our main office on the wall, right when you walk in. And that quote is? The power that makes the body heals, heals the, the body. body. Very good. Garrett, I had a bell. Garrett, give me two <laughs> bells today. Yes, the power that made the body heals the body. So depending on what your philosophy is, is why we're here, the energy that was created when the sperm and the egg came together way back when, when mommy and daddy got fun one night, that same energy, as long as we keep feeding that energy and nourishing that energy physically as well as chemically, the body has healing capabilities. This comes to a point where it doesn't, of course, anymore, but that's how the body works. And I mean, how many books are out there and how many, how many people get paid countless amounts of money every year to, to help women who are pregnant feed their baby appropriately. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I mean, while it's growing. Sure. Um, and I feel like there's so much emphasis on taking care of that, that, uh, living thing while it's inside of you. And then once, once it's no longer inside of you, we just throw caution to the wind and here's a microwave meal. And, you right. know, I can't wait to stop breastfeeding so I can start getting drunk again. I hear that a lot. It's like, oh. No, take care of your body as if you're pregnant. That's a good way to do it. I yeah. like that, I like that, Garrett. Good idea. Take care of your body as if you're pregnant every day. You don't smoke, you don't drink, you, you exercise, you eat right, you take your supplements, you get good rest. That's a good way to take care of yourself. Because the mother is, is, is doing it to take care of the kid, but then does the mom do that after the fact to take care of herself? Do you do that to take care of yourself? Yeah. If you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of others. And it said, if you don't take care of your health, it'll go away. And it usually does. And that's why people end up in our offices and they say, Dr. Joe, why didn't I do this sooner? I've been listening to you for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. I've read your books. I've followed you online. Why didn't I ever listen to you sooner? And I don't know that answer. The answer is, I don't know. Start listening to us now. Our goal is get you well and keep you well. And again, on the website, we have over 1,500 hours of podcasts. The cost, all of those podcasts, the cost for that, absolutely free. It's my gift to you. So why wouldn't you listen to them? Why wouldn't you take advantage of all this knowledge that's there for free? drjoe.com is the website. So we're talking today, uh, and all the supplements, by the way, we talk about are on the website, drjoe.com. So we're talking today about health foods in disguise. A lot of people will grab a protein bar, a nutrition bar, and they'll say, this is going to be great. Well, a lot of those bars are 350, 400, 500 calories I've seen sometimes. That's more than a whole meal should be. Well, Dr. Joe, that's going to be my meal replacement. It's not a meal replacement because it's not enough nutrition. A meal should have something raw at every meal, fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds. Uh, it should have a lot of high-quality nutrients in it, and that's not it. And they're loaded with sugar. 
or high fructose corn syrup or agave nectar. And so that's not a good food. Now, they're quick, they're easy, they're cheap, but it's not what you want to do. A better choice would be get yourself some mixed nuts, organic mixed nuts. Get yourself some dried fruit, organic dried fruit. Non-organic dried fruit has sulfites in it. And sulfites can be carcinogenic and they also can cause headaches. So if you grab a bag of, of organic nuts and organic dried fruit and have a couple of handfuls of each, way better than a fruit bar or a, a bar, much cheaper, and it's going to be better for you. And so that's what I would suggest. Now, if you do eat nuts, I'm going to go off on a tangent here. If you do eat nuts and you have them in your house for a while and you eat them and they, start to, they taste sale, throw them away. The oils in the nuts have gone rancid. And rancid oils are extremely dangerous. So don't think, well, these cashews taste a little off. I'm going to finish them because they're expensive. No, throw them away. Buy smaller quantities next time. These pistachios, add it, throw them away. Peanuts, don't eat peanuts anyway, by the way. They're not good for you. But throw them away. Another, that kind of, uh, kind of segues into granola. And it made its mark as health food. And if you make granola by yourself, it probably isn't bad. But when you buy these commercial granolas that are just packed with sugar, it's just like eating candy. It's not any better. I mean, you get a little fiber maybe. That's about it. But you can just take uh, oats and make your own. Now, I remember when I was in Europe, when I graduated college, I was 23 years old. I graduated third in my class from, from doctor school, from chiropractic school. And I was a whiz kid, whiz through school, wasn't a problem to me. I wanted to go treat myself. So I had worked since I was 11 years old. There was not a day I didn't work in my life, I don't think, since I was 11 years old. So at 23 years old, uh, a friend of mine, Pete, and I, we decided to bicycle around the United Kingdom. So we got on a plane, packed our bicycles on a plane. That's a long story I'll tell you someday over a Super Greens maybe. <laughs> and got to England. I met him in England. He flew from another state. Uh, we met in England and we bicycled around England. And we stayed in hostels. Now, if you ever stayed in a hostel, if you're young enough, it's really cool. It's a lot of fun. And I noticed they were eating, instead of breakfast cereals, everybody had something called muesli. A muesli was nuts, dried fruit, and oatmeal. And that was it. And I tasted it. I said, this is really good. So you could make your own muesli if you want to. Now, the commercial ones, be careful. It doesn't have sulfites in it and chemicals and sugar added. But just take some rolled oats, some nuts, whatever you like, chop them up, some dried fruit, chop it up, and there you go. You've got your muesli. That's way better than a granola bar or a, a, a anything else. Um, wraps, a lot of times people say, well, Dr. Joe, I'm going to do a wrap instead of a sandwich because that's it's better because it's thinner than breads and bagels. But it actually, a wrap it equates to about four slices of bread, four small slices of bread. Whole wheat or not, don't buy into that whole wheat thing. It's, it's, you shouldn't be eating wheat anyway. Number one food allergen that we have as humans is dairy products. The number two food allergen is wheat. So if I can give you one takeaway tip today, I'm going to give you, I gave you several hundred actually, is I want you to cut out your wheat and your dairy products. Now here's my challenge to you. I want you to do it for two weeks. At the end of two weeks, eat wheat and dairy again. Have a couple of slices of pizza. See how you feel. If you don't see a change in two weeks from cutting out wheat and dairy and you go back on wheat and dairy, you have my permission to eat it for the rest of your life. No one has ever cashed in on that offer. And I've been offering this for four decades now. Because wheat and dairy, if you say, well, I don't have any reactions. I got tested for it. Try it. See how you feel. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. So what? You cut out wheat and dairy for a couple of days. But if I'm right, which I am, then you'll say, okay, you're right, Dr. Joe. I really need to avoid that. And when you do it, you'll see a difference. Even if it's not a gluten issue, which is found in wheat, it could be a sugar issue. If you're eating bread, it's still, it's still sugar. It's like eating you know, tablespoons of sugar. And the dairy products too, loaded with sugar, loaded with casein. We don't have the enzyme renin to break down casein. So just cut it out and see what happens. That's butter, cheese, yogurt, eggs, ice, uh, not eggs, ice cream. Cut out the dairy products and see what happens. And I think you'll be very happy with it. And gluten-free products too. Don't think you're doing better with gluten because it's still sugar. Gluten-free bread. Now, if I eat any type of bread, I'll eat gluten-free bread. Now, a lot of people will say this to me. Dr. Joe, as soon as my freezer empties out of all the bad junk you just talked about, I'm going to start doing what you're doing. Why wait? Take that stuff. Donate it to charity if you want to. Give it to somebody you don't like. Let them get sick. But don't wait. My favorite vegan quote. There's a restaurant in Canada. Uh, and I mean, they serve vegan junk food. But... Um you know, they serve vegan wings and mac, mac and cheese and, and all kinds of different vegan junk foods. But the sign over the door says, baby steps are for babies. Be an adult. Be vegan. There you go. Right. Exactly. You know, <laughs> yeah. Why, why not now? Yeah. And people say, I'm going to start. I'm going to give up this. I'm going to give this. If that's how you got to do it, hey, that's okay. But I jump in with both feet, man. I tell you, once you get the nervous system working, the digestive system working, and a good diet, you 
will regret why you didn't do this sooner. I promise you. I've been doing this for a long time. Everyone regrets they didn't do this sooner. No one has ever said, boy, I'm really glad I waited this long to fix that neck pain or fix that back pain or fix my acid reflux or my bowel issues. No one ever says that, that, boy, I'm glad I waited this long. So if you're waiting, well, that's on you. I can't change that. And in our office, we do a lot of what we call anti-aging medicine. Our doctor, our medical doctor is an expert in anti-aging. And so that's what we talked about testosterone levels. Let's test it, see where we are. If there's an issue, maybe we can give you bioidentical hormones. Maybe we can give you supplements. Maybe we can get you on Dr. Joe's formulas and try to get those testosterone levels up. Why let age uh, eat away at you when there are things you can do? Again, we're all going to age, but there are things we can do. PRP, we talked about PRP earlier. PRP is a treatment we do in our office that just blows my mind. We take your blood, spin it down, and take out what's called the platelets. Those platelets are the growth factors. Those are those healthy young cells in your body. We can re-inject them in a concentrated form back into your body. So if it's arthritis in your knee, unless it's bone on bone, and that's what's called stage four arthritis, stage one, two, and three arthritis, many patients respond incredibly to PRP injections for arthritis, the knee, the shoulder, the hip, the spine. Amazing. It's anti-inflammatory and stimulates growth. Uh, we can do, like we said, we talked about erectile dysfunction. You can even do it for erectile dysfunction. You can inject your own healthy cells back into your body and start to stimulate new cell growth. Crazy how it works. Then we get you on things like nitric oxide to increase circulation. Uh, for women, too, uh, if you have leaky bladder, <coughs> excuse me, getting excited here. Leaky bladder, uh, women after having babies, sometimes after uh, menopause, uh, the estrogen drops down and they start having a weakness in their women parts. PRP might be used for that as well. And it starts to stimulate sensations, try to keep it clean here, for both men and women again. So a lot of times, you, you we're going to get older. Our testosterone is going to drop. Our cells are going to get older. But there are natural things that we can do to fight that. And with neck pain and back pain and shoulder pain, chiropractic care, most effective, least expensive treatment for pain, back pain. Why wouldn't you do that? If it doesn't work, you could always, what we call, elevate the care. We can go further. We can do medications. We can do injections. We can do surgery. But let's start out quick, easy, and inexpensive. It makes no sense why you don't do that. So we can work on a dietary plan. Every patient that comes in, we do a chiropractic evaluation. If we need to, we can do a medical evaluation, a nutritional evaluation. We take x-rays on most patients. We'll show you where the problems are. It's not like we're going to hide it and say, well, I saw something on x-ray. No, we're going to show it to you. And you'll be able to see exactly what it is. So if we can get the nervous system working, the digestive system working, and your diet right, then we can add the medical intervention if we need to with PRP. Um, there are other things we can do as well that way, anti-aging, testosterone levels. It's crazy why you don't do this sooner because every day that goes by, it gets a little harder to fix. Anyway, I digress. All the services are on our website, drjoe.com. Just right on the top, it says services. Click that, hover over it. You have a drop-down menu. You can see what we offer. It's really crazy good stuff, and I like it. So... If you want to make an appointment, normally the first visit is $375 for us. We've reduced that to $199, exam, x-rays, consultation, adjustment, going over the x-rays, and the nutritional pro protocol. Nutrition alone is $150. So it's silly not to take advantage of that. We accept most insurances, car accidents, sports injuries, um, Medicare. If you've ever been in a car accident, ever, if the car was damaged, you were damaged 100% of the time. No one has ever walked away from a car accident in my career where the car was damaged and they were unscathed. Even if you don't have symptoms, you want to get it checked because there may be something underlying that isn't going to show up right away. You want to get that checked. And the longer you wait, the more likely the insurance company is going to be like, well, you didn't go to the doctor. You weren't hurt. I had some, a lady one time, her father died. Couldn't come see us. She buried her father, came back to Georgia, and the insurance company denied her claim because she didn't go to the doctor right away. I mean, that's how sneaky they can be. <clears throat> anyway, I, I digress. Want to make an appointment, drjoe.com. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. Other things that you think you're doing right, but you're not. Processed foods, low-fat foods, fat-free foods. If you take the fat out, doesn't have a lot of flavor, what do we do? We usually throw sugar in there. So just because something is fat-free, that's usually a warning sign not to do it. Most commercial salad dressings are loaded with sugar and chemicals. My first book that I wrote, Eating Right for the Health of It, it's on the website, drjoe.com. I have a whole chapter on nothing but salad dressings. Because again, if you're going to eat a plant-based diet, you're probably going to eat a lot of salads, and you got to make it fun. And I go through phases. I'll go through the ginger salad dressing, and there's my favorite. I love the ginger salad dressing. Um, so I'll do the ginger salad dressing. Then I'll do the vegan Caesar salad dressing, and then I'll do the tahini salad dressing. So I kind of go through phases, and I'll usually make a big batch, and once I'm done with it, then I'll switch out. But uh, that book, Eating Right for the Health of It, 
has over 200 recipes in it. And the first half of the book tells you how to change your diet. So you know, want a good guide that's there. The second guide is, is uh, my, my second book is called Prescription for Extreme Health. And that breaks down the nervous system, digestive system, diet. We have a whole chapter just for athletes. We've treated a lot of professional athletes in our career. I was even flown to Cuba when it was still under, you know, it wasn't even allowed to go uh, to uh, train, or not train with, but work on the uh, Cuban Olympic team. I got a gov- government pass I got from the State Department to go to Cuba and work with the Olympic team. So uh, we're pretty well known all over the world. So. Uh, we talked about fruit juices earlier. Folks, fruit juices are nothing but sugar. I do not recommend fruit juices. Vegetable juice is okay. Fruit juices, no. Whole wheat, still not a good idea. Whole wheat is still wheat. Um, it has gluten in it, which can irritate the bowels. Um, it's still sugar, so don't be fooled by whole wheat. Uh, that word is not a good idea. Years ago, I remember doing a radio show many, many years ago on margarine and how dangerous it is. And then a couple of months later, CNN did a report and they said margarine may be the number one cause of, health, of heart disease because of something called hydrogenated oils. And hydrogenated oils were just coming into uh, public awareness. And so I was talking about margarine one day on a show. My mother would listen to my shows. And then CNN did a report on it. My mother called me up. And she said, did you hear a report on CNN? And I said, yeah, I did. And she said, I'm not sure if you're a nut or a prophet. I haven't quite figured it out yet. <laughs> and I said, probably a little bit of both. But most of the things we talk about are going to make it mainstream and have made it mainstream. I've been doing this for a long time now. It goes mainstream. Well, well, we were talking about vitamin D for the first two, three months of COVID. And then finally, I think it was, is it Europe? England. Uh, England that mandated, you know, vitamin D. Yeah, they're they're giving vitamin D to uh, high-risk people. They're distributing it for free to people with uh, that are high risk for COVID. We talked about it. I've talked about vitamin D forever, but we talked about it as soon as COVID hit. I was like, guys, got to get your vitamin D levels up. I take... 5,000 international units of vitamin D a day. Um, and it's on the website, drjoe.com. And now vitamin D has K2 in it. So K2, that helps with calcium absorption. That's another lecture. Um, but I take 5,000 international units a day, which is five drops. So it's not a lot. You don't need a lot. It's the least expensive insurance policy you'll ever buy is vitamin D. And I had COVID. Yes, Garrett tested positive. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I had COVID. I slept 20 hours a day for almost two weeks. But um, yeah, I took vitamin D and and ultimately it Got made better. a huge yeah. impact. All right, folks, we're almost out of time. If you have any healthcare questions, send them to me through the website, drjoe.com, drjoe.com. If you want to make an appointment to come see us, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. We want to be your doctors. We don't want you to suffer. So you can go to the website, book an appointment right there. The first, vi- norm- first visit is normally $375. We've reduced that down to $199. We accept most insurances, car accidents, sports injuries, Medicare. Children, by the way, folks, need to get evaluations as well. The way to get healthy, simple plan. Normally functioning nervous system, normally functioning digestive system, and good nutrition. That's the core that you need. And all the supplements we talked about are available on the website. We'll ship them to you, drjoe.com, or come by our offices and pick them up. That'll save some shipping. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Tell your friends about the show. The website, again, drjoe.com. Catch you next time.